thank you for coming here this morning. Um, we're going to share with you a story about our neighbors on the other side of the fence. Um, within walking distance of this location in Charlottesville, there resides a family, um, a husband and a wife, who live in a wonderful home um, that the husband's grandfather built in 1916. Um, and unfortunately, the home has seen little renovation since then um, and doesn't provide them the best situation for their conditions. The wife is handicapped. She, um, is, she's bedridden and is unable to traverse stairs. And she loves to cook. And she cannot go outside to barbecue. She had trouble in her kitchen. Um, and it wasn't a healthy situation. And her husband wanted to provide the best means also. And so an unhealthy home, a, an unvibrant home, does not provide the best situation for, um, for them to feel empowered and for them to be able to achieve what life has to offer. So a healthy home, a vibrant home, creates healthy residents and excited residents, and excited residents create a healthy and strong community. And the community we are talking about is like literally within walking distance. It's called 10th and Page, and um, many of the residents of the 10th and Page community actually work in the university or around the university, so they're actually part of our daily ecosystem. And one of the beautiful things about this community is that it is like extremely important to Charlottesville history. Many of the homes have been built in the early 1900s, so they're like 100 years old. They've been passed down through generations. This community has a history of being exceptionally diverse. From its very beginnings to like right now, people have gotten along and they have had an incredible wealth of cultural uh, backgrounds. And one of the other interesting things about this community is it now, um, houses many of the residents from the historic Vinegar Hill community that was displaced during the 1960s urban renovation projects. Uh, that community was located next to the nowadays Staples near the downtown mall, but many of its residents have moved to the 10th and Page community since then. So um, this community has a, a lot of low-income families, um, and Many of the homes have elderly residents, some have, some have young residents with, with children, and quite a few of the homes also have multi-generational families living within. Some of these homes have been, actually within this community, uh, a, ra a rather unique thing about it is that many of these homes were bought by women and have been paid off and have been passed down as like the, the thing for the family. This is, this, these homes have been passed down through generations. So as you can imagine, for the Charlottesville community, this um, this neighborhood is actually exceptionally rich in history and very important because many of the families have resided in Charlottesville for like hundreds of years. Now the rich history of the 10th and Page neighborhood is just one of the many reasons why it's important to the greater Charlottesville community to preserve and improve on the homes in the neighborhood. AHIP, the Albemarle Housing Improvement Program, uh, has been working in Charlottesville in often low-income areas uh, renovating homes with two main principles in mind, which is improving health, safety, and comfort, as well as improving uh, energy efficiency in the homes. Uh, they go about their work in a dignified way. They, they're not just throwing money and labor towards a home, but what they do is they build trust and they build relationships with the homeowners, and they work together to find unique solutions to the specific problems with the home. Um, now, one thing about aging homes is the inefficiencies. So there's an unfortunate cycle that happens. With home inefficiencies, we have high energy bills. With high energy bills, you have reduced savings to put back into home renovations. And with no renovations, you have more home inefficiencies. And it continues on. Uh, where we tried to step in and where AHIP steps in is generally at the home inefficiency stage. How can you... Um, correct that in order to prevent the rest of the cycle from occurring. So who are we and why would we be interested in this project? Well, uh, we all started out in the EcoMod program led by Professor Marshall and we were all really excited about sustainable technologies and renovating homes. Uh, we have backgrounds in civil, computer science, biomedical engineering, and Stephen, who is not here with us, he's studying abroad, is electrical engineering. So in our class, we learned how to use uh, blower door tests to test ventilation of the home. We could put in monitoring equipment and like see humidity and temperature levels of the home, plot all of that information over like many hours and get all kinds of different 
analysis out of it. Uh, we built uh, sort of models of homes in these really advanced software programs so we could like predict future savings and model the renovations before they happen. So we were really excited. We we're like, oh my gosh, we are like, and you know, we're millennials. So we're like, yeah, all this awesome cutting edge technology. Let us just go ahead and just use all of this technology and get all this data. So as Sasha pointed out, as engineers, we apply the data and analysis to all these situations to, to solve every problem that we face. But we quickly learned in working with these families that the greatest value did not come from using the sensors that collect uh, temperature and uh, relative humidity, but instead by just talking with these people and to empathize with them and to see how they're doing in their day and to ask them, hey, you know, when you, when you wake up, you know, what, what is the first thing that you know, bothers you? What, is, what are some of the things about your home that really stand out to you? And what do you enjoy about your home? And you try to build off of that. And so instead of completely relying upon the, the numbers and the analysis, we talk to them and we use the numbers and analysis to aid us in our questions. So if we saw that one room got higher humidity levels, then we would ask them, hey, does this, does this room ever feel uncomfortable to you? And they tell us, yes, it actually does. So then maybe we'll try to address that issue during the renovation process. So it's, 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 it was an odd step for us as engineers to go away from the numbers, but we found that it, great value was gained in just by having good conversations. So the last thing that we want to talk to you about today is the impact that on these homes that we witnessed through our project and also tried to contribute to. Um, so as the, ham the family that we uh, were referring to in the beginning of our presentation now has a new porch that they can go outside and enjoy spending time um, in the nice weather. Uh, they have handicap accessible bathroom on the first floor, which they didn't have a bathroom there at all. Um, additionally, they have new entranceway to their home that provides for a safe pathway for emergency personnel when needed. There was um, a situation in the past where the actual layout of their home prevented, um, prevented EMTs from getting through and actually could have you know, ended very, very badly. Um, luckily, that wor worst case didn't happen. Um, but with their new home, they've also been experiencing energy savings. So last time we talked to them, um, it was still a very cold month. It was, it was February or March, and they'd already been saving $100 a month on their energy bills. Uh, another family that we worked with has a new kitchen that they can be proud of. They have a new room for their daycare center, um, and, and they um, just have a sense of, of pride and, and joy when we, when we ask them about how they feel about the renovations and how um, everything has been, has been going after the, the program. Uh, that's probably by far our main, um, or our, at least our favorite part of our, of our project, was seeing the renewed pride and the renewed um, hope in, in the community and in, in their personal home. Um, just another example of that, the last time we went, we visited the first house, uh, uh, he was painting his walls, the interior walls, a new color. He was uh, continuing the work that Ahip had done on a larger scale and, and taking pride in his own, own house, doing his own work, like his grandfather did when he built the house. Um, and so that's our main takeaway from this, and that's one of the things that was uh, kind of changed from our first, our first initial proposal that um, was very, very technology-focused, data-driven. We did end up with results that we um, were able to forward to AHIP on our recommendations. And in most cases, they really did uh, support what the original auditors who went into the home and uh, without the same technology were able to observe through asking questions and um, through making observations. So we, we were happy that, that everything kind of agreed and um, that we were able to see there's more than data. There's, there's, um, there's you know, experiences that, that really kind of shape what questions we ask and, and what renovations end up being made. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.